How's it going on guys? Welcome back to another installment of the Six Cylinders Podcast. Today we are with Andy, Henrik, Henry and Dom and we're going to talk about the US Grand Prix, all the things that happened during the Grand Prix and even some news after the Grand Prix which came just a few hours ago. First of all, what's your opinion on the on the Grand Prix guys on the weekend as a whole? Boring. Boring? I <laughs> think it was alright. I thought it was a really good race. Yeah, the the race was pretty good, especially in the midfield. There were quite a lot of battles. Mm. And yes, watching Sainz yeah. and Force Indias, that yeah. was really good. There was even a battle at the front for just a little bit, uh, six laps to be exact. But then uh, battle, battle for first uh, died after six, lap six. Yeah, basically the Mercedes OP engine just came alive and. Yeah, Vettel had absolutely no chance to defend that. But let's talk about the start first. Let's start with let's start with the start. Um, Vettel got <laughs> Vettel got a pretty good getaway, and the move Hamilton did on him was, in my opinion, pretty similar to the one Vettel did in Singapore. And everyone jumped on him and said that he, you know, basically had the was to blame in Singapore. And Hamilton did the, exactly the same thing yesterday. Yeah. Yeah, I think when you do that, you can't tell if there's a third car there or not. You just sort of take the risk and hope that there isn't. And in Singapore there was, and in this race there wasn't. It's just... But it's what everyone does, I think. And in, Sing Every in Singapore there was also rain, so it was not so easy to see in the mirrors as well. Yeah. Because, of yeah. the, because of the spray, so... But... Then after the start there was... Uh, were there any collisions at the start? I can't remember. Right at the start. Magnussen and someone. Magnussen got con Magnussen made contact <laughs> with both Saubers in the race, but was it on the first lap or uh, why? Why do I think it was few laps I later? I think the second. Yeah, I second think it was. It, it wasn't quite and the Magnussen first lap. Magnussen blocking Perez in qualifying. Yeah, it was really not too good. Wait, it was really bad home race for Haas. Who am I kidding? Uh, both cars out in. Q1, I think. Did Grosjean get into Q2? No, no I think. At least, at least Magnussen knew he made a mistake and apologized. Yeah, but still, pretty dire weekend for Haas. Yeah. And it doesn't seem to be getting, to be getting better because their car... Of course, I mean, at this point in the season, they're concentrating on the next season, but they need those points for the more constructed prize money. You'd, you'd think Haas would do better all the races really because it's basically a Ferrari really but just a bit simpler yeah and not as good well since I'm tweeting all the time that Haas should sign Joseph Newgarden um, <laughs> I say it here too because I think uh, Haas needs a yeah, fast American it's time and but yeah Magnussen is, 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 not, is not a good driver I think no, uh, Magnussen's really. Yeah. He, he he can be fast, but he crashes most of the time. Yeah. <laughs> but, and he's too but, aggressive. <laughs> Some, yeah. but sometimes, Ericsson, sometimes uh, it's good to be aggressive, like he was in Singapore, I think, when he did that pretty good overtake. But sometimes, like he, sometimes he's a bit over aggressive. Yeah, I think Magnussen That's would cool. be more suited to cars with bumpers, <laughs> really. <laughs> DTM. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so later on in the race, after you know the Hamilton overtook Vettel with uh, that Mercedes engine, there the the racer was basically decided at the front. Even after Vettel made that pretty big undercut on Hamilton and it came really close behind, uh, it, it, was it, it was it was still it was just a false hope for all of us. And the race was already done until lap six, so. We can talk about the backwards, you know, after the top teams. Um, Carlos Sainz battling with the Force Indias. Good first weekend for Sainz in the Renault. What do you think, guys? Great debut I've... for the team. Yeah. And I feel like if he joined at the beginning of the season, he would be up there with Hulkenberg. In my opinion, if he joined at the start of the season, like 
if they let him go, because do, do you remember that Renault wanted to sign him for the start of the year last year? And had he gone there at the start of the season, I think Renault would have been the fourth team in the Constructors Championship right now ahead of Force India. I think yeah. he still had hope for a Red Bull seat. And then Helmut Marko well, told him he's, he's getting one. He's still in the Red Bull. You know, he's still sponsored by Red Bull, and he, but he's basically yeah, on, he's loan, on loan. On loan, yeah. So yeah. he might come back, and if there are no spots in Red Bull, he might even come back to Toro Rosso, which is not very likely, but still, it is a possibility. I, I don't think he'd ever go back to Toro Rosso. Yeah, I mean, but, um, no. if 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 Ricardo left Red Bull after next year, so there was a place there for 2019. I don't know if Carlos Sainz would want to go there, really, because aren't they? having a new engine that year well I don't know but that's another topic we can talk about like Verstappen signing the new contract and all the interviews Christian Horner did last week saying that they, he, they, Red Bull want to build a team around Verstappen where does that leave Dan Rick like Mercedes. Mercedes it's the only logical place for him I mean, I don't see him going to Ferrari with Leclerc and Giovinazzi being there waiting for the Raikkonen seat. Mm -hmm. So the only realistic opportunity for him is to go to Mercedes if they decide to drop Bottas after the end of next season, which is looking likely considering his performances. Yeah, they'll definitely get rid of Bottas. They'll probably just have to decide, do we have Ricardo or Ocon? Yeah, yeah. Well, but it doesn't... didn't work well when... Um, as Tappen and Sainz were teammates, um, they also had, um, yeah, crashes. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know if that would be a, a good a possibility. Mm. Mm. Well, but imagine it like Ricardo in the in the potentially fastest car in twenty nineteen against Hamilton. That would be quite a battle, wouldn't it? That would be worth watching, definitely. And if Ferrari and Red Bull are still there, I mean, not like this year when we all had false hopes, but a true battle between all three teams, that would be amazing. If all of the three main teams were exactly the same, it would, have been, it would be really close right now, I think. Like, Ricardo, definitely in the top three. And, Re and, and Renault. Renault are also going to come in my, come there, in my opinion in the next two seasons at least like the their three year plan was getting podiums next season so yeah i mean uh, no pressure but they have to deliver next season if you know they really want to make that step up to uh, really being a top team and i think we all want to see hulkenberg and Sainz on the podium yeah and yeah, yes. not only on the podium potentially battling for race wins in the future too Mm. Yeah. They've already done, and um, they've already got rid of Palmer, and he's dead meat anyway. So that's a good move by them. Already. I, I think Palmer, Palmer, should have, Palmer should have the Mercedes seat. I think. <laughs> Palmer and Hamilton. <laughs> yeah. No, no concurrention at all. <laughs> I bet he's crash into his rivals. I, mean, I bet Palmer would be in Race of Champions later this year as well. <laughs> so then the race was not, you know, there were battles in the midfield, as I said, Carlos and the two Force Indias. By the way, that, that great overtake by Sainz on the Force India of Perez round the, sticking around the outside and from the long right-hander and into turn 19 of the inside was pretty good overtake overtake of the race together with the one Vettel did on Bottas as well yeah I think the science move was the best one and then the Vettel one and then there was another interesting overtake near the end <laughs> coming yeah. coming to it yes at the end Max Verstappen did a uh, very brave ballsy overtake on Kimi Raikkonen and has to be said but doing this overtake he did go off the track and after the race was penalised five seconds for that I think he deserved it. Yeah. I mean, yeah. there is, like, 
of course, illegal. of course, consistency is a thing. You know, he was the only one penalized for that, and everyone was going off track. But he was the only one who made an who made an actual no. overtake going off track and cutting the track. No, and it's different when you it, go off track and when you cut a corner. Yes, exactly. There is a limit. You know, you can go wide. You can. Yeah extend a bit you, you can go wide but gaining an advantage and overtaking someone off track is beyond the I limit think, yeah I well think, uh, when you go wide in some corners you actually lose time then yeah you, you're yeah, gaining exactly. advantage yeah but but if you look to the uh, overtake by signs um he was uh, yeah off the track and um finished his overtake and i think yeah maybe it's also a, an advantage an advantage because um, he didn't need to uh, break to yeah be on the track anymore. If you know, uh, if you understand. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think and, the and reason he was penalised was because he cut a corner to overtake. Yeah. And everyone else was just running wide. Yeah. But um, I think the driver briefing before Mexico <laughs> that'll be interesting. <laughs> yeah. There'll be loads about that. And. A second time for second season in a row. There's a second time Verstappen getting kicked out of the podium. <laughs> it was yeah. it was pretty funny. It was pretty funny seeing Kimi staying there. I I, th I thought he almost wanted to laugh. <laughs> like yeah. I could see his little little smile on his face. He <laughs> was pretty pretty funny, and Vettel also um, did admit that he was trying to give Raikkonen a toe, which I think he bottled a little bit because. The gap, the gap at the DRS detection point between Vettel and Raikkonen at the last lap was one second zero zero something, and Vettel bottled yeah. bottled it a little bit, but he at least gave him a bit of a slipstream on the straight. So Kimi made it on the straight, and then a few corners after the step and passed him. Yeah. Well, I don't know who's if it for Stefan was right to do that or not, because. Well, we FIA in general that weekend were very lenient about exceeding track limits to overtake, and then for staff and corner cussed, and then well, it's, it's kind of tough to explain, but yeah, I feel like they were a bit strict, but he shouldn't have gone five seconds. He should have just. Well, I don't know. No, I think the five. I think the five seconds is deserved because he cut the track to overtake. I mean, he gained the place, and it wasn't just the place; it was a podium position as well. Yeah. All, all the really all people, all but people are saying that he didn't deserve a penalty because it was a good move. Uh, good move isn't you know that doesn't mean he doesn't deserve a penalty. Yes, the move was good, but yeah. it was off track. Had he done it on track, fair play then. But yeah. And what really annoyed me with Max is uh, when they told him he got a penalty, they didn't even do a handshake, Kimi. Yeah, which is I I, I saw this as well. Yeah, I mean, of that, course, that of was... course, he was pissed. I mean, I understand it, but still, got but it across. wasn't Kimi's fault. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In general, I think um, the FIA shouldn't. Uh, yeah, well, the tracks. They should. Uh, it shouldn't be possible to gain an advantage because you are off the track. Well, like if there are, uh, if there would be gravel, yeah, yeah, there wouldn't be any advantage, you know. They and in, uh, in 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 Texas, there is, there are so many, uh, yeah, parking places. Uh, I don't know why. Mm. Well, that's, it's the same at a lot of modern tracks now, isn't it? They've just got tarmac yeah. runoff everywhere. So they might have to... They'll have to find a solution yeah. to try and sort it out. Yeah. Either putting some grass there or changing the yeah. rules or something. Well, changing the rules like clearly circuit. doesn't work because, you know, they're, they're still drivers, even if they're told, you know, not to cross the white line they still there are still going to be drivers who do this so I mean yeah. pushing to the limits means pushing to the absolute limits you, you know you, you can't just stop yourself from doing this yeah. well I think I think in the rules it says something like if they're deemed to have gained an advantage which can sort of be interpreted 
differently. So if they just have a strict rule, you can't go off track. And that makes it a lot easier. Okay then, so we're going to talk about the next few cars in the race after, you know, the top three teams. After Force India Renault, there was a Williams of Massa. Pretty dull race for him. And after that comes Daniel Kvyat in the Toro, so coming back after two weeks to race his absence. And yeah, he did a pretty good performance on track, in my opinion. Um, he was even limited on running on track because he... His seat was um, taken by Sean Galeo in FP1, so he he missed FP1 and still, he did a very good performance on track. It blows my mind that as Hartley is going to be driving in Mexico and Kvyat's not going to get a drive. Yeah, that was, a, that was what I was going to say. He did a yeah, very good yeah. performance on track and he still is getting dropped. Even though I am a fan of Brendan Hartley and Pierre Gasly and I'm happy that they're there and they're going to be racing together. But it's harsh on Kvyat after this performance to get dropped. Yeah, but Kvyat had already so much uh, chances um, to 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 show how good he is. But yeah, I I don't think that you um, should let him drive for just one good race. I mean, he had four points before in this year. Or he's still be he's still behind Vela in the championship. So. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and I mean, their line is in the Sauber. Yeah. Yes. And if someone hasn't watched my career mode, you can see how bad the Sauber is. It's a donkey. Absolute donkey. But yeah, uh, next race for Mexico, Gasly and Hartley. What are we expecting from them? If there are any expectations from them, because, you know, their the well, total, well. total combined races are free, which is. Definitely not a lot. So, if there are any expectations from them, what what should they be? Gasly well, in the top twelve, I think, and well, Hartley, same as America. Literally. Well, Me Mexico is one. There's a really long straight there, so I think using the Renault engine, I don't think they'll score points. Yeah, yeah. And, and also Toro has gone quite down. They haven't been really doing well in the development race. Their car has really been. Staying at the same level whilst others are improving. So at the start of the season, if you can remember, Toro was easily a Q3 car, and now it barely even makes into Q2 sometimes. Yeah, I think they develop the car for next season with the Honda engine. Yes, um, and that is that something interesting. Better. Interesting to point out that I think that Hondas are actually improving. It, it, it's not a lot, but. I do think that next year they might be at least on par with Renault and McLaren. McLaren will uh -huh. really be fuming that they let they let Honda. I think Toro Rosso is gonna be is is a is a underdog for next year, and I, I think they could do well next year. I be, um, I believe in I Honda. Don't. <laughs> I don't I, I, I don't yeah. believe what I'm saying, but I believe in Honda for next year. Oh God, <laughs> why? <laughs> I, they, they've had three years and they've never really improved, so I can't yeah. see them suddenly. It's just it's a really just a feeling point. inside me. I can't. Well, explain. for this race, for for the USA, they had three horsepowers more, I guess, and <laughs> the drivers <laughs> uh, didn't realize that. Uh, yeah, they made an update, and I think well, yeah. three horsepower Although, isn't really a noticeable upgrade, is it? Like, but what Alonso does it give was that? in the points. Alonso was having a good race before he before it yeah. broke down. Yeah, another reliability issue for Honda as well. Well, they yes. improved a bit, but I think um, the chassis by Torosso is a bit um, weaker as the McLaren. Yes, chassis that's what and, I, that's what I said. Torosso fell down the development race. I mean, at the start of the season, yeah. at the start of the season, it was not only the engine that was slowing down McLaren. The chassis wasn't also very good. Yeah, I mean, for next year. Um. Uh, there were McLaren had a new front wing for this race, and Alonso said that this was, this front wing was the best uh, was the best in the paddock at, at the time. I think I read that, I read this in an interview. He said that this was the best front wing in the paddock right now. I mean, okay, they clearly think yeah. that they clearly think that their chassis is good, but next year they have to prove it. If their chassis is really that good, then they have to be straight away on par with Red Bull. With that Renault engine, I would like yeah. to see how Ferrari will cope to Mexico. 
Yeah. Yeah. That's another thing. I think. It has some I think. Um, but it also has some corners. Well, Ferrari have nothing to lose now, have they? I mean, championship is pretty much over. If Hamilton finishes fifth, he's the world champion. So Ferrari have nothing to lose. There's still hope. Yeah, there, not there is, really. but <laughs> not really okay. big. But um, Ferrari have absolutely nothing to lose. I think they'll just go for it and try and win the remaining three races, or at least give their best in trying to do this. I think in Brazil they might win, but Mexico and Abu Dhabi, there's a, you know some long straights there. I think they'll still be Mercedes tracks. No, Ab- Abu Dhabi is a Ferrari track. Uh, Abu Dhabi. Abu Dhabi is yeah. a Ferrari track. Hmm. Except I'm those sorry. two straights, it I is a Ferrari a, track. A Mercedes track. I think it's a Mercedes track. All those 90 degree corners is basically a Russia with a little yeah. bit uh, shorter straight. <laughs> but um, so should, yeah, we can. Should we do Mexico predictions? And I've. Well, I want to talk about the pace of the Ferraris this weekend. They're, they weren't exactly looking very promising. And Vettel said that, you know, he th- he he was pretty confident before the race. He thought they have a chance for they might have a chance for the win. But I was really happy when he overtook Hamilton in turn one, but then lost <laughs> all hope. Hamilton we overtook him. In, in he he said that they had absolutely you know he had. They had no chance to catch them because they just didn't have their pace. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know when uh, why Hamilton doesn't have any reliability problems. Well, <laughs> they they introduced a new power unit in Belgium, and yeah, it was uh, that's three, four races, five races ago. I don't, I can't remember that's, that exactly, but that's yeah. on why I'm ho- I'm still hopeful that something could happen. My hopes rely on this Mercedes engine to blow up like a terrorist bomb. Yeah, but but I think the championship is gone. Yeah, it, it is gone, but just for fun, yeah. you know, I, I really want Ferrari to win this last three races just to, you know, get the momentum into the next season, like Rosberg yeah. did in 2015. Yeah. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. so... They could. Yeah. So, are we doing the Mexico predictions now? That's what's left, maybe. Yeah. Who does anyone? Yes. Does anybody here wants to go first, or should I go first? Uh, I'll, I'll go, go first. All right. I'll go first. All right. It's is it top three in qualifying, top five in the race? Yep. Yeah. Um, for qualifying, I think it'll be Hamilton on pole. Um, <laughs> Very difficult to Boston. predict. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I think Bottas second and Vettel third. And then in the race, it'll be Hamilton win. And then Vettel, Verstappen, Bottas and Ricciardo. Right, I'll go second. Uh, Quali, of course, I mean, Hamilton both. <laughs> Surprise. Um, P2, I'll go for Vettel. And P3, I'm tempted to say Raikkonen, but I'll say Bottas. And for the race, I think uh, I think Ferrari is going to do something with the strategy because they have, as I said, they have absolutely nothing to lose. So I think it will be Vettel, Hamilton, and then Raikkonen, Verstappen, Bottas. And Hamilton will be champion. Who's next? I'll go. For Quali, I think Hamilton, Bottas, Vettel. For the race, Bottas, Hamilton, Vettel, (laughs) Ricardo, Raikkonen. Did you watch the last couple of races <laughs> and Bottas' performances? <laughs> and Bottas winning a race. Exactly, Bottas is due a good performance. He he, he won't he he won't deliver up until at least March in the Australian Grand Prix. No way, 
until the end of the season. I think he'll finish behind the Red Bulls. I I have I don't have a belief in Bottas. He's just a sh- okay. he's just a shit. He's just a n- not too good version of Barrichello. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Okay then. Oh, change it if, as you go. No, to no, that's your no, no, you that's your prediction. <laughs> no. Of course, you get to you use a Lewis Hamilton picture, so that's your prediction. Don't worry. Uh, who goes next? It's the Hamilton fanboy next. I go next. Cool. So, I say in quali, P1 Hamilton, P2 Vettel, and P3 Bottas. For the race, I say Vettel will win. Uh, second will be Verstappen, third Bottas, fourth Raikkonen, and fifth Ricardo. Because I think in Mexico the Mercedes engine by Hamilton will blow up. Well, okay. I, I go next. Has some positive thinking there, but uh, <laughs> just just Holy. just to mention, wait, um, Ricardo with his, with his engine problems, he might have to get a penalty. So take that in mind. Yeah, but uh, Verstappen showed um, what's possible from so far behind. Yeah, but if someone says Ricardo P2, you know, for example. <laughs> yeah, for qualifying, go. I'm going for uh, Hamilton, uh, Vettel, uh, Verstappen, Ruiz, Hamilton, Vettel, Bottas. Verstappen and Sainz. Oh, bold. Wow. <laughs> I was not expecting that. Very bold. Sainz. <laughs> I think Ricardo will have problems. Well, if he starts on the back of the grid, then it is possible with the tight turn one in Mexico. And I'm feeling something. I want to feel a Mercedes engine blowing up, but I'm just not feeling it, so... <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, I guess that's been for today. Anything else you can remember we can talk about or? Or not really? No. No. Alright, so that's been the podcast for today. If you enjoyed it, then hit the like button, comment down below what are your predictions for the race and also what you think of our of the, of the podcast. Share it if it's not too much trouble to you and also subscribe to my channel to see the future installments of the podcast and to everyone who has a YouTube channel here. I'll leave the links in the description down below. Follow us all on Twitter. Links will be in the description. And I guess I will see you guys next time for the Mexico GP podcast. Bye. Yeah. Bye. 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 Bye.